You did not have Francisco Alvarez on your list. Why not? Okay. Here's number 11. You guys probably can't see this. I pulled up my list that I made. <laughs> you can't see it. I believe it's a you. screen. I can see. I'll Please confirm for, for them <laughs> that I had Alvarez as number 11, which I took my list to 11 just that way when I sent it to people to check that if they thought, like, why, did you, why didn't you put Francisco Alvarez on the list? I could be like, I did. He just missed the cut. So he just missed the cut. And I'm kind of feeling like maybe I should have had him mm -hmm. higher. Don't give him your pressure. No, I'm, I'm, succumbing to, I'm succumbing to spring because he's been so good in spring. So, okay, Fair. I'm going to talk about that instead. Talk about how good he's been in spring. A little positivity. Because <laughs> I didn't have any of the people we had talked about yesterday on my list either. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like a Hall of Fame vote. We won't, we won't score she. Uh, we talked so much about how he had a surprisingly good defensive season last year. He was really good. He was like fourth, I think, in catcher framing, which was unexpected because coming into the league, there was this expectation that, like, well, he needs to work on his defense. However, last year he was not great at um, controlling the running game. He was 54th of 63 catchers and caught stealing last year. And as anyone who's watched the Mets this spring knows, he's been really good yeah. at throwing out runners this spring. He's been he was, He's got eight of 15 so far this spring, I think that's the most of any catcher. So perhaps I was wrong. <laughs> perhaps I, I this I said this yesterday, but in general, I was like, there should be fewer Mets on this list because their ceiling is just lower than the Yankees, and there's only so much impact you can have if you're on a team that's going to probably finish around 500. But I do think that if Francisco Alvarez takes his like really uh, definite step forward in controlling the running game, that that's something that has long-term impact on the Mets because having a really really good defensive catcher who can control the running game is a great thing long term for the team. So you know what? Yeah, he Hannah, been on the I list. had I, I had Alvarez at number 11 as well, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, so I am with you. Uh, I think what I'm looking for this year is just steady consistency from him. We know he's got the big bat. We know he can hit. He's got the defensive tools, but you need to see him come up in big situations and either make the great defensive play as you alluded to or they've got a lot of pop. So the homers are nice, but I'd like to see just some more consistency from behind the plate. And it's not a knock on Alvarez not making my top 10. I just had 10 other people who I do feel will be more impactful. But the framing will improve. I think he needs to help a weaker pitching staff this year and really make his mark. So he's close to cracking the top 10 for sure, but he didn't make my top 10 either. Harp. Hope that makes you feel better, Hannah. Uh, but Harp, going back to Senga, you left Senga off your list because of injury concerns, but the panel had him at eight. Uh, do you think that he could be more impactful than being? Uh, we only this pointed season? out who we didn't put on our list. I didn't put Senga on my because list. Because I, I had Alvarez. I, didn't put Senga on my I list. did have Alvarez on my list. So on my I, list. Just, I just want to say that. Uh, but Senga, I, listen, I worry about pitchers' injuries. He's got a shoulder capsule injury. They say he's doing well. He hasn't really started throwing yet, so or I guess he's tossing or whatever. But I'm not. I'm just not putting a guy on a list who's got a shoulder injury, I'm not buying it yet. So uh, that's my rationale. And I did have Alvarez pretty high on my list, though. So uh, I guess that's so it where we'll, it we'll let it go. <laughs>